Welcome to Amsterdam Tonight. It's a lovely evening and we're starting off immediately with our main story about poverty and democracies. The question we're going to focus on is whether democracies reduce poverty. Before starting the intellectual talk, however, let's ask Amsterdam's most faithful resource. Thank you, Max. Uh, right now we're at the dam. I'm going to ask uh, all the tourists some questions about uh, why democracies reduce poverty. Do you think poverty is diminished by democracy? Yes or no? I think the countries that promoted democracy have, have really proved to be um, beneficial to the, the lower class people. Uh, do you think poverty is reduced by democracy in Italia? Uh, I don't think so, especially in, the, in this period. Do you think uh, poverty is reduced uh, by democracy? I don't know. Thank you, Elas. <laughs> so clearly, there has been quite the controversy and lack of motivation for this particular subject. Nobody actually knows what is truly going on. But don't worry. Obviously, we do. You see, I delved into the literature by Joseph Siegel, and I found that it is proven that poor democracies outperform poor autocracies. This is because democracies bring political checks and balances, responsiveness to citizen priorities, openness and self-correcting mechanisms, all of which contribute to steady growth and superior living conditions. In democracies, leaders have incentives to respond to the needs of common citizens, otherwise they find themselves out of office. Not only this, but, I, but it also seems to be that democracies use resources much more effectively than autocracies. Also, it does seem relevant to say that Siegel has shown that democracies emphasize the importance of power sharing and equality, whilst within autocracies this does not seem the most prominent feature. This principal feature of equality due to openness and responsiveness leads to minorities being heard. It is clear that democracies therefore promote human development and help reduce poverty in theory. But let's take a look at it in practice. We're going now live to our Swedish correspondent, who is at the foot of the Kebnekeze in Sweden to see exactly how well people are off in the oh-so-amazing democratic nation of Sweden. Well, thank you, John, and good night, Amsterdam. I'm currently enjoying a lovely afternoon here in Sweden, where the HDI index is 0.916, which ranks Sweden on the seventh rank of the HDI index of the world. This can be explained through the high life expectancy at birth of 81.6 and specifically the 16 years of schooling the Swedish youth needs to go through. Furthermore, the gross national income is 36.143 purchasing power parity per US dollar. The welfare state is specifically very well done in Sweden as the taxpayers usually pay the amount of the welfare state. They pay between 31% and 56% which makes sure that we can really maintain the citizens' rights and health program in Sweden. The Gini index is also quite high, it's 25, where zero is complete uh, income equality and 100 is not equal at all according to the income. So what you can really see is that Sweden has an exceptional welfare state in which citizens are very happy, in which the Gini index is very well done, HDI index is very high and specifically the gross national income is also quite high. So, I go back to you now, John, back to the studio. Good luck with your show, and bye from Sweden. Thanks, Elsa. Interesting story. It seems that people are doing rather well, even though it's always dark. Now, let's take a look down south to my great friend Adriana Melchor. To you the same question. How well are people off in Venezuela, statistically speaking? <laughs> Hola Juan, I'm now in Caracas, the capital of Venezuela, where I'm trying to find out a bit more about how Venezuelans are doing. Well, based on World Bank data, the HDR value of Venezuela is currently placed at 0 0.748, which makes Venezuela 75th like in the rankings of the HDI across the globe, which is very low compared to Western living standards, but oh well. Um, not only that, but Venezuelan life expectancy is around 74.6 years, and the expected years of schooling is 14.4. GNI per capita is not doing so bad at 11,475 purchasing power parity. 
which is, yeah, again, it's okay. However, the Gini coefficient currently stands at 44.8, meaning that wealth and in, like income inequality is, is quite rife in the country. Um, and we, we figure it's because of a very corrupt political system. Now, after the death of Chavez, the new president, um, Nicolas Maduro, has been appointed, basically, and uh, it's, it's safe to say that corruption in, in Venezuela is, is still endemic and, and the system of corruption persists in the country. Thank you, Adriana, for your insightful comments on Venezuela. So, apparently something odd is going on here. On the one hand, we have Sweden, and on the other hand, we have Venezuela. Both democracies, but they are completely different. So, because of this, we have invited a guest speaker. Today with us is Charlotte Smith. Yes, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, how are you today? I, I'm great. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Do you want some water, maybe? Uh, yes, Before we lovely. dive into this intellectual topic. Yes, lovely, thanks. So, um, could you tell us something about democratic regime types and poverty? Uh, well, yes, of course. It's actually quite obvious what's going on here. You see, democracy is never a set thing. It's not the case that a democracy always shows itself in the same form. Kersberg and Afis explain how Sweden is a prime example of a social democratic welfare state, according to the welfare regime types from um, Espin Anderson. This is a system in which the state takes good care of its citizens. This care is also universal, which means that everyone is eligible to it. This explains the low Gini index that Sweden has. It has a very low inequality rate. Uh, okay, I see. Yeah, that's of course the main point that's always brought up about Sweden. So how does this differ from Venezuela? Well, um, Venezuela has a very different kind of regime type. First of all, the corruption in the country is very, very high. Many things went wrong under the regime of Hugo Chavez, who was actually starting to become more or less a dictator in the country, even though he was elected on democratic terms. After his death, um, his vice president took over, but the same thing actually occurred. Okay, it's almost Russian practices, basically. Well, that may be, like, be too over-exaggerated, but yes, yeah. Anywho, you can see that the democratic structure alone is very different in the two countries. Above all this, it is also the case that Venezuela is not a social democratic welfare state like Sweden. It does not at all have the strong social welfare state, but rather relies on market and family sources of welfare. As Alex Seguro Ubiero says, um, following the Espen Anderson model again, it would be classified as a more conservative model. It more relies on uh, family care, family structure, and things like this. Okay, I see. So the difference in democratic welfare system is basically the reason why poverty is so low in Sweden. Exactly. As you said before, a democracy outperforms an autocracy if you look at human development. But within democracies, you can see large differences. Within this regime type, poverty is best countered through a social democratic welfare system. And of course, by not having a corrupt president. Well, yes, that, that definitely helps. <laughs> okay, now we'll continue shortly with our discussion um, while we go out for a break. Well, welcome back everyone. I um, hope you didn't miss me too much. So, today we discussed democracy in two countries, Sweden and Venezuela. We showed you multiple discussions on the streets, the mountains and in the studio for you to create a fuller image of the effect of democracy on poverty. To us, it is clear that democracy only under social democratic circumstances reduces poverty, while conservative models are less fit to decrease poverty because they are less universal and thus welfare provision reaches less people. So our research indicates that democratic welfare is necessary to decrease poverty. Therefore, we recommend Venezuela to adopt this system and to lose its corrupt government. This will hopefully, hopefully create a less poor society in Venezuela with a lower Gini coefficient and thus more equality. Have a great night and we'll see you in the next Amsterdam Late Night Show. <laughs>